Namaste. On this special occasion of the anniversary of India independence, I would like to extend warm greetings to the Indian community living in Belfast and throughout Northern Ireland, and to Image Nation, NI and Sanjay for organising this celebration. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Indian community for their immense contribution to our city. The Indian community plays a full role in the economic, social and cultural life of our city, particularly in growing knowledge economy, our tourism, leisure sector and of course on the front line in the battle against COVID-19 in our National Health Service. It is important that we recognise the work all our communities do in developing and enhancing Belfast. In good and in challenging times, whether it is supporting the vulnerable in our communities or coming together at the Belfast Mila or Daiwali to celebrate each other's traditions. We are privileged that so many of the Indian community call Belfast home and we wish you well and hope you enjoy your celebrations. Thank you and stay safe. Namaste, Jai Hind, Happy Independence Day, and welcome to the celebrations organized by Image Nation and I, Mr. Sanjay Ghosh. My name is Pushpender Singh, and I'm an entrepreneur by profession. I live in Northern Ireland, Derry, London, Derry, UK. I belong to a strong army based family rooted from India, Himachal Pradesh. My family has given their lives and blood to the nation, and we're still at it and strong. It gives me immense delight to talk with India's leading selection expert of forces, the real hero, the real gentleman, the real superstar, retired Major General VPS Bokani, with 37 years of experience as a commanding officer in armed forces. He has participated in various opera successful operations like Pawan and Rakshak in Jammu Kashmir. Just before retirement in 2019, Major Bakuni sir had assumed the responsibility of Commandant Selection Center for South to select officers for Army, Navy, and Air Force. Now we are going to talk about his experience, achievements, discretions, and valor. Let's cut the long story short. Hamad sir ke prakram, unki achievements, unki virta. Or Shore ki kahani, unki jawani. Jahan, sir, and happy independence to you, sir. Jahan, and very, very happy Independence Day to you all. Thank you so much. I really uh, respect your feelings sitting in a country which is far from India, yet you have the joes to celebrate Independence Day. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Sir, we, as I said, we want to talk about your experience and achievements. <clears throat> so there's a few things we wanted to know about you and your career throughout the army and after retirements as well. So why did you choose Indian army, sir? Were you forced to join Indian army or was it your own passion or your own decision, sir? Okay, you started off with that. Let me tell you, I belong to Uttarakhand. And I belong to a very, very remote village in Uttarakhand. Okay. Right. And my entire childhood was uh, in the village, and almost 60% of the youth were in the armed forces. Right. So every time, every year, I used to see numerous of them coming back on leave or going back from leave. 
So they used to all talk about the armed forces. And that was a time, someone said when I was in class three, our village has got about 36 soldiers, but none as an officer. So I told myself, I'm going to be the first Indian army officer from this village. And that was the dream which I, you know, carried along right from class three. And I think it is that dream and that passion for the dream which made me an officer. <clears throat> so this is a great story, actually. So yeah. it was your passion. Great, great to know. Um, how was your experience throughout this journey? Please tell us about your little experience about uh, you have spent 37 yeah. years in the army. How did you find the yeah. army? Uh, Pushpinder, as you will agree, from a village boy, the journey has been just wonderful. Yeah. I joined as a Jawan. The journey became all the more beautiful. It is a journey of a village boy to a Jawan and the Jawan to a journal. It's a very long, very interesting story of ups and downs. You know, being from a very remote village, my education was in the village itself. So my biggest struggle was with English language. You know, you can't become an officer if you do not know the English. The reason simply is officer's language in the armed forces because you have uh, troops from all over the country, people from all over the country, it's English. So you've got to learn this language. So my biggest struggle has been with English. Now you'll be very surprised to know Imagine when I came to the city in the seventh class, someone asked me, how old are you? You know what I answered very proudly? I am not old. <laughs> you know? And many times I became a laughing stock in the sense in the 12th class, when I was a football captain, you know, <clears throat> I used to encourage my team players and I used to use this word, terrible and terrific interchangingly. I should tell them what a terrible game you played. I'm so happy with you. And they used to wonder yeah, whether to cry or whether to laugh at me. <laughs> so anyway, I joined the army as, a, as an apprentice in the lowest rank. You know, if you have a dream in your eyes, you can do anything in your life. I firmly believe in that. And I joined it. Can you believe it from apprentice training school, Bhopal, within two and a half years, I did my graduation privately appeared for all India competition as a candidate, uh, you know, like any civil candidates and cracked the examination of the CDS. Went for the first time for the interview of the CDS Combined Defense Service to the, to, uh, so that to become an armed forces officer. But I was the only candidate out of the 14 who spoke in Hindi completely because I couldn't. And obviously I had participated very confidently, but I failed. And I came back, I asked one officer, I still remember his name, Major Joshi. How come I feel I had worked so hard? He said, Bhakuni, if you do not know English, even the God can't help you. And that words were really which affected me. And from that day only, I was an anti-English activist type. I, you know, never liked this language. I felt the British has imposed this language on us. And from the very next day, I started loving British, loving English and loving everything which is related to English. And within six months, I got myself trained in this language and I cracked the exam again, went for the interview and this time came with flying colors. Can you believe it? The deputy president of the board who interviewed me and said, Bhakuni, you are from, you are a soldier in the army and you are from a remote background. I can see by your data. How did you learn English? You know, that kind of compliment I got. Anyway, so that was the initial struggle and that, that's how I became an officer in the Dobra Regiment. Wonderful experience. Uh, mm. I'm really delighted to know about your, your passion about it and the way you had transformed yourself <clears throat> from like a remote guy to an officer. This is brilliant, unbelievable, sir. sir Thank uh, you. Yeah. We're going to uh, talk about your operations that we heard that you have been in participate in various operations, sir. So we're not going to ask for everything, but just a quick overview, because my dad was the part of uh, one of your operation that was Pawan was yeah. in Sri Lanka. Isn't that right, sir? Yes. So, yeah. Tell us about that uh, operation about Pawan, sir. Okay. 
Firstly, let me tell you, once I joined the army, I was really desperate to see action. I loved action. And one of the things which I will tell you about me, I used to pray God before I got the commission. God, I don't mind dying young. So you provided, for, yeah? provided, yeah. provided you, my death is an action and as an army officer. That is the two condition I have put to the God. I said, I don't mind dying young. So I was loving action. So I volunteered for Operation Power. And once I went there, it was a wonderful experience for about a year. That is the place where I came under fire first time. I knew what happens when you come under fire. And that is the time on 30th of May, 1989, I had an opportunity in an encounter to eliminate myself to dreaded terrorists or militants, whatever you may call them. And one of them was the area leader of that place. So we had such wonderful experience. And can you believe it? I shot him down with my carbine gun, stain gun. And he was hiding on a tree. And, and when he fell down, he threw a grenade towards me. And look at my luck. And he forgot to take out the pin. <laughs> so he forgot to take out. Later on, once he was killed, I saw his body falling down from the tree. And then another body fall, falling down from the tree. And they were dead. I was sure that there is nobody else there. And when I went along the troops, I saw the grenades there. And poor chap had threw one grenade towards me, but he forgot to take out the pin in the hurry. So that was one of the beautiful experience. Yeah. What was your mind, state of mind, you know, when you saw them guys, they were there and they were, they were hiding and ambush you. And uh, was, was it different feeling altogether? Were you scared at all or... Or you just really wanted to have a fight or? Yeah, you know, one is not scared. One is a bit cautious, of course. You got to be cautious on such time. Your life can go and you are a leader. If you go, it will affect your troops as well. But, you know, since you love action, you wanted to see something and you want to be counted. How you can be counted in the army if you show some bravery act, if you eliminate terrorists, if you kill militants, then you can be counted. People will respect you. Like in the football, you got to score a goal. In army, you got to kill a militant or a terrorist to be counted. So I was desperate to get counted. So here, the, I got my first kill. So I was blooded into the battle and had, you know, people started saying yes. And the first time my luck was I shot down the area leader of that place. Selection was his name. Along with his bodyguard, his name was Ashokan. So I remember this. So it was a beautiful action. So uh, this kind of thing do happen. And it was a very enjoyable kind of experience after that people punctuate you so much. As a civilian, I cannot even express um, my feeling, you know, the, the thing you have done. As you mentioned, sir, about leadership, as you were commander in the operations, I'm going to ask about uh, leadership and planning is they're, they're tribute to the military successes. Yeah. In your experience, which is more important? A better plan or a better leader, sir? Uh, let me tell you, Pospender, both are important, but undoubtedly, if I have to choose one, I will choose the leader. You know, leaders, the way they implement, the way they execute, having a bad plan can be executed by the leader in a manner where she can guarantee you success but it can't happen other way, lead, other way around. If you have a, a good plan, but a bad leader, it is bound to fail. You know, the leadership in the army is entirely of a different kind. The leader has to lead by example. It happens only in the army. The leader has to be the first one. The leader has to say that, follow me. And once he says that, people will be there. They will line up behind the leader. If he cannot say that, if he is the one who's following the troops, then who's going to bother about? I can give you hundreds of examples just to quote you two examples only. You see, Kargil war, everybody knows. Bikram Batra, when he was given the task to capture that hill, don't you think he knew very well that perhaps he is not going to come alive? He knew that the task is so difficult that most of his troops are going to be killed. And he told them, to write a letter to their homes. Can you believe it? All the troops before they went for the operation wrote a letter to their home, which their families received after their death. You know, and that's how Bikram Batra 
left that attack himself and he captured that because the stakes are so high that individuals do not bother about their sacrifice also. Because look at the stakes. If Bikram Batra fails, the whole nation fails. Whole nation fails. India fails. So if the young officer soldiers, you have such heavy responsibility, the lives of the soldiers under him, don't you think that he is going to be extra brave? Do you think he's going to bother about his life? Hundreds of examples. And I can quote examples after examples. So it is the leadership which matters the most. A bad plan executed by a good leader can turn the tables. Okay. Yes. So, and however, I do say that, that even along with the leadership, if you're planning a sound, then of course, the chances of success are going to be far more. That's why in the Indian Armed Forces, we lay too much of emphasis on planning. And when the plan is being discussed, it may get rehearsed thereafter. Many suggestions are asked and we are open to give our views. But once a concrete plan has been worked out and decided jointly by everyone, and after that, it can't be changed, then we got to ensure its execution at all costs. So while planning, we will go through the pros and cons, seek people's opinion, rehearse that plan if need be. So, and that's how we ultimately uh, going to finalize it and then execute. Very good. So, well, we can learn from army. We can implement these things in our social life and our professional lives, leaderships and plannings. Important in and out. Great. That is good. Um, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the tremendous work you're doing at the moment after retirement. So, as we all are aware of your work, sir, the great opportunity, the great platform you're providing to the youth to become an armed forces officers. What do you think about it? How motivated our new generation is? Are they want to join army as an officer? Are they looking to see their career in the army or what's their, what do you think when you see these new generation coming to you, sir? Yeah. Uh, Pushpindar, there are uh, three, four issues. The first is, let me tell you this. Among some of the Indians may not be aware. Today, the armed forces is the most popular service. If you look at the uh, you know, annual report of the Union Public Service Commission, you'll find maximum youth applying for the armed forces. In fact, the selection rate of the army is the least or the toughest examination which they have to crack. The selection rate of the interview alone is just about 3.6%. So hardly anybody gets selected. It's a very, very difficult selection because the selection process is for five days and different officer-like qualities are checked in that. But let me tell you, it is the most popular service. The youth are now vying for the army. They want to, their first choice is the armed forces. I have no doubts. Not me who says that. Union Public Service Commission annual report says that. It can be checked up. You can Google it and you'll be surprised to see that okay, how popular armed forces is in the uh, in India. I'm the gonna, second thing, which I, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna get a pause here for yourself. See, yeah. I can understand because I belong from Himachal and North, and yeah. everybody back home they're passionate to join Indian Army. Even I tried to get an Air Force, but I couldn't make it. I wasn't lucky enough, unfortunately. Yeah. My brother is one of the best commando in India at the moment. He's in Special Force. My brother, my elder brother has cracked CDS twice, but he couldn't get selected. So I just wanted to ask, um, the, the way he was telling me, there were hundred of boys were selected from all over India and he was one of that in the CDS troop. So he was in SSB, but he said at the last, they only selected one out of 30 people or so. Why is that? Why do you not choose? Are they not capable physically, mentally or? Why, why is it so hard to get in there? Yeah, Pushpinder, I do agree. The selection rate is the toughest. Even the civil services can't really compare with the armed forces selection system. The simple reason is you are selecting leaders in the armed forces. It's a personality-based test. It's a personality-based test. You've got to have a personality of an officer who can really stand in front of the troops who had got all those core qualities and those officer-like qualities so that 
he is found to lead the troops both in peace and war. So for that, the entire testing process is very, very elaborate. And it will keep happening. That's the reason, can you believe it? In spite of such a large line of, of youth for armed forces, look at this, there are virtually 9,000 plus deficiencies in the army alone. Air Force and Navy are generally okay, but army there are 9,500. What prompted me to open this institution was one, right from my childhood, I realized that the better coaching is not available for this. You know, people cannot be guided and coached towards this. One was that. I thought, okay, I will fill the gap. Second thing, I also, since I was the head of the selection system, my job, as you said, was selecting yeah. uh, officers for the Army, Navy, and Air Force in the South India. I was, it was located in Bangalore. And very interestingly, it is the same board where I got selected from way back in 1979. I became the president of the same board after 35 years. It was quite an, you know, sort of achievement for myself and I really liked it. So I wanted to give this kind of credible uh, support and guidance and mentorship to the youth. And that's what exactly I did. That's why our institution is already a big hit and large number of youths are taking guidance from us. And can you believe in the last five months, five days, we have six candidates getting selected. I got six calls and their photographs are in my Instagram. Can you believe it? In the last six days, five guys have already got selected. Sorry, it is five, not six. It is other round. In the last six days, five guys have got selected. So we are getting wonderful results and it is really, and since it was my interest on this, I did a course on this and I was posted, had an experience at the top level of the selection system. I understand the selection system in and outs. I, can, I know how to guide the youth, what exactly they lack and how they can be trained to crack the examinations. Every one of them can crack, but the time which will, they will take will be different based on their personality status as of now but they can crack if they have a dream, if they have a passion, they can certainly crack that examination. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're the best example for that, as you have mentioned earlier, you're from remote yeah. India and you wanted to join it and you wanted to be in a commanding officer and you have got it, sir. You have, you have achieved really, um, yeah. I can't even express something, you know, and the support you're giving to the nation and the army as well to providing this great platform to the youth to join Indian Army, which is which is really commandable, sir. This is wonderful something to do. And I wish I was there in India and I had something like this when I was young back in days and join your services and I I could have made it, but well it's all destiny. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, sir. And would you like to say anything about yeah. youth and nation? Any message? And uh -huh. Uh, frankly, I will say that uh, Pushminda, you guys are also doing a great job. Look at this. I respect and I salute your spirit. The guys who are sitting in England, it shows your love for our country. You know, I will only say them that the youth also have to learn from you guys. Why you guys? Because they are learning from armed forces, of course. But you still are thinking of our country. You are still thinking of your roots. Because I feel if you forget your roots, you know what happens to a tree without roots. You are just like that. We should never forget our birthplace, never forget our roots. We need to go back. We, if we cannot go back, mentally we should be there with the people of our own country, remain with them. Otherwise we'll become rootless, rootless. You know what uh, a great saying uh, I remember in this, how can a man die better? But fighting ferocious odds for the ashes of his fathers and for the uh, safety of his temples. You know, that kind of dialogue I suddenly recollected. How can a man die better? Huh? But fighting ferocious odds for the ashes of his fathers. See, if your land is so much better, what can be better than but fighting for your own land, own forefathers, where every but he has been there, He's staying there, coming back to that land again and again, reviving those good old memories, contributing something to the same land, 
itself is a great achievement. My only message to uh, through you is this, that never forget your roots. Remain in touch always. And let me tell you, you'll become a better man. Yeah. That's what we learned from army. A normal guy, they can make a gentleman. A gentleman, they can make a superman. So army is a big inspiration in my life. And there's millions of them back home or all over in the world. Army is being inspiration and it's a big organization. They are providing the best quality of life, the best joy of the life. I think the normal guy cannot even dream for that. We're really thankful to you, sir. And before we go, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It was nice chatting with you, sir, and to know about your experience and achievement, sir. We wish you all the very best. Yeah. For your thank MSB you. Sure Shot Academy. Yeah. And thank you, Pushpinder, and thank you and through you to all the guys sitting out there, including Sanjay, who has an assured role in Bollywood. Let me tell you this. You can tell him again. So thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so sir. much. Jahan. 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 Thank you, Jahan. Thank you so much. Thank so you. I'm logging off now. Don't worry, sir. Okay.